In this video, we will demonstrate a case of radiofrequency ablation for the treatment of cholangiocarcinoma. We see a wide variety of applications for radiofrequency ablation, including the introductory treatment of cholangiocarcinoma. A 70-year-old female with T3N0M0 cholangiocarcinoma, which was diagnosed by cholangioscopy and cross-sectional imaging, showed locally advanced disease. There was involvement of the common hepatic duct and the right main hepatic duct. A review at our multidisciplinary tumor board showed borderline involvement of the portal vein and right main hepatic duct, leading to the need for a neoadjuvant approach. The patient was treated with standard of care with gemcitabine and cisplatin, and then consolidated with radiofrequency ablation. The patient received treatments of gemcitabine and cisplatin, but developed decreased side effects and tolerance due predominantly to neuropathy. We then consolidated her treatments with introductal radiofrequency ablation of the bile duct. Here we've removed previously placed stents and are cannulating the bile duct with an occlusion catheter. We now perform an occlusion cholangiogram and you can see where the stricture due to cholangiocarcinoma involves the common hepatic duct and some of the right main hepatic duct. Here we perform initial cholangioscopy using the Spyglass DS 2.0 system. The advantages of the Spyglass DS 2.0 system versus the original DS is in optics. There's a high definition 180p camera and you can see here that even small vessels within the classic appearance of cholangiocarcinoma are now highlighted. Cholangiocarcinoma is known for having high vascularity which allows the tumor to feed itself and grow. Here you can see in full display individual blood vessels which will be noted to be charred after treatment with radiofrequency ablation. It's important to note that the endoscopist is following both fluoroscopy as well as endoscopy and most importantly the spyglass image. Therefore there are three images which we pay attention to during the performance of cholangioscopy. It's very key to understand the anatomy of the biliary system. If you note the image on the left which is the fluoroscopic image you can see where the tumor begins and where it ends. It's very important for the endoscopist to note the margins of the tumor on spyglass and fluoroscopy and become proficient with this because after the margins are denoted on spyglass and correlated to the fluoroscopic image, we then will note these fluoroscopic markers. Here you can see transition to normal duct, which is the proximal extent of the tumor. The distal extent of the tumor is at the level of the ERCP scope. Knowing where these markers are, we now can place the radiofrequency ablation catheter over a guide wire, which is left in place after spyglass cholangioscopy. Using just the fluoroscopic image, we place the catheter at the appropriate position. In this case, that correlates to the bottom rib of the patient and the top of the ERCP scope. The catheter has two 8mm stainless steel electrodes separated by an 8mm spacer. The ablation zone is approximately 25mm plus or minus 3mm in length. Here you can see the two probes visualized under fluoroscopy. We're placing it at just above the proximal extent of the tumor, which was noted on fluoroscopic imaging and spyglass. We're going to perform our first ablation. Because this is in the intrahepatic portion of the system, we're going to ablate at 7 watts for 90 seconds. After this ablation is completed, we have a one minute cool down where the catheter decreases its temperature. And then we replace the position of the catheter down to the distal extent of the tumor the distal extent of the tumor was noted to be correlating to the top of the ERCP scope. After our one minute cool down period, we then replace the position of the catheter. This is in the extrahepatic portion that we're ablating now, down at the distal portion of the common hepatic duct. In this case, we're going to use a 10 watt setting. When we're ablating at 10 watts, the catheter ablates to a depth of approximately 3 to 4 millimeters. When we ablate at 7 watts, the catheter ablates at a depth of 1 to 2 millimeters. Again, the ablation dosimetry is for approximately 90 seconds at the set wattage depending upon location of the probe placement. After we've ablated for the second time, we wait one minute and then we remove the catheter. Here we're going to take an in-depth look at what post-ablation cholangioscopy sees. Please recall the previous images of 
pre-ablation cholangioscopy where there was high visibility of small vessels that were feeding the tumor. Here you can note on post-ablation the classic white charring appearance which is seen within the intrabiliary mucosa. Additionally, you see these black specks. These black specks are actual burnt vessels which were previously visualized prior to ablation. The white char on the tumor confirms that not only have we ablated, but that there's efficacy in the ablation and that the ablation zone covers the entire area of stricture and tumor. Radiofrequency ablation is often used in a multidisciplinary setting. In this case, the patient is being treated in a neoadjuvant approach, working closely with surgical oncology and radiation and medical oncology. Our goal is to get this patient to surgery, therefore we use a plastic stent after ablation. The patient is to receive one to three treatments total of ablation in combination with the chemotherapy and then restaging and reevaluation at our multidisciplinary tumor board to see if she would be a candidate for proceeding for surgery.